Disney and Charter are talking about carriage fees, and the outcome could affect how much you pay FO. Disney is set to renew its multi-year carriage agreement with Charter, the second largest US pay TV provider, at the beginning of August, according to people familiar with the matter. So far, there are no signs the two sides will have a testy public renegotiation. That is PAR, but this particular Disney deal has widespread implications for how future TV carriage deals will be crafted. The outcome could that's because Disney is about to transition to a new era of direct-to-consumer streaming. At NTS1, in the past, carriage disagreements almost always stemmed over the same thing, the network that makes or licenses the content wants the pay TV operator your cable or satellite company to pay more money for that programming. The fee negotiations sometimes result in networks being blacked out on a pay TV service for a period of time. Viacom extend the distributor and the content company usually reach an agreement, because the traditional pay TV ecosystem has long been symbiotic operators need material for customers to watch, and the programmers need people to see their programs. But the advent of direct-to-consumer streaming products could lead to blowout public fights over the declining value of linear TV networks. A. Content providers who have long pushed for higher carriage fees could face severe pushback from pay TV providers who say that linear networks aren't as valuable because so much content is available online not only at Netflix and Amazon, but now within the content company's own streaming products. Moreover, if, in November, Disney will start selling Disney Plus, a family-friend entertainment product, for $6.99 a month. This will include D Disney is also planning on bundling Disney Plus with Hulu and ESPN Plus, its direct-to-consumer streaming service focused on sports, to make the suite of products more appealing to consumers. No current season. As Disney makes its content available outside of the pay TV ecosystem, the value of its pay TV channels should decrease. In other words, but if your child can now get that show on Disney Plus, which doesn't require a pay TV subscription, the value of the Disney Channel should decrease. The more stuff that's, the Disney Charter negotiations probably won't get too contentious because more than any other programmer, Disney wants to protect the pay TV ecosystem. Eh? ESPN is the most important cable network in the cable bundle. For its suite of net so far, ESPN Plus has only been an add-on product to ESPN. It hasn't touched, there's no impetus for Disney to change this arrangement because ESPN has successfully kept raising its carriage fee, unlike, say, still, a dis moreover, Disney wants pay TV providers to integrate ESPN Plus into their user interfaces, just as Comcast has done for Amazon and Netflix content, according to a person familiar with the matter. Then, a pay at this point, Disney isn't asking to remove valuable assets from ESPN and shift them to ESPN Plus, two of the people said. That's key. But Disney will likely want the ability to place particular games on ESPN Plus and add other sweeteners to entice more consumers to sign up for the digital service. And those games pro spokespeople for Disney and Charter declined to comment on specifics of the carriage talks between the companies. Terms and carriage fees are often applicable across pay TV platforms thanks to so-called clauses. So the word will get, and while Disney may not want to rock the pay TV bundle, Warner Media doesn't have nearly the same incentive, because it doesn't own particularly valuable linear networks Tablespoon, TNT, and CNN are its strongest. Then again, at NT owns DirecTV and Warner Media, and Comcast owns NBC Universal. So both media c of course, it's also possible cable operators that also offer broadband internet might not care enough about their traditional video business to even care that much about TV carriage fees. Instead, they, as Moffat Nathanson analyst Craig Moffat wrote in a note to clients this week, cable providers are coming around to the idea that it's okay to lose TV subscribers as long as they keep paying for internet access. In since broadband has a higher gross margin than video, 
for every customer that cuts the cord on TV but keeps buying home internet, margins rise. If that's the attitude among cable providers with big broadband businesses, such as Charter and Comcast, the operators may be totally fine living in a world where customers flee the bundle and use their internet to watch Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. This would likely to, but even if Charter doesn't care about losing pay TV customers, at NTS Direct TV and Dish don't offer high speed internet to the home. Chances are they'll care. No one said the fragmentation of media would be easy.